Let me read to you a passage from the sixth chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 36 to 38. It's the Gospel for Monday of the second week of Lent. St. Luke writes, Jesus said to his disciples, Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For the measure you, with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. That's from Luke chapter 6, verse 36 to 38, in which our Lord refers to a God of mercy. According to the biblical account, there are several foundational theophanies in the religion of the covenants. There was, of course, God's communication to Abram after he migrated with his father Terah from Ur to Haran. God shows himself as a source of blessings. Abram is to leave Haran and go to the land he would be shown. There he would be blessed and become a great nation. And through him all the families of the earth shall bless themselves. Genesis chapter 11 verse 31 to chapter 12 verse 4. God is a God of blessings and Abraham would learn to trust in God entirely. Abraham's son Isaac also came to know God directly. We read, The Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham your father. Fear not, for I am with you and will bless you and multiply your descendants for my servant Abraham's sake. Genesis chapter 26 verse 24. God is a God of blessings. He is kind and merciful. Again, God made himself known to Jacob, the son of Isaac. In Jacob's dream of the ladder reaching to heaven, God says to him, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and your descendants. And by you and your descendants, shall all the families of the earth bless themselves. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go, for I will not leave you until I have done that of which I have spoken to you. Genesis chapter 28 verse 12 to 15. God reveals himself to be a God of blessings, of compassion and of mercy. And later in his prayer to God, Jacob not acknowledges this, as we read, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, I am not worthy of the least of all the steadfast love and all the faithfulness which you have shown to your servant. Deliver me, I pray. Genesis chapter 32, verse 9 to 10. Jacob appeals to God's loving mercy. This divine mercy is the foundation of the religion that has been revealed to him. Centuries later, with the children of Israel in virtual slavery in Egypt, God appears to Moses in the burning bush and he says, I have seen the affliction of my people and I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them to a land flowing with milk and honey. That's from Exodus chapter 3, verse 7 to 12. God is a God of blessings to, the, to needy and suffering man, a God of mercy and compassion. The greatest and most defining event in the foundation of the chosen people, in which God passes from being the God of Abraham and the patriarchs to being the God of the chosen people of Israel, was the theophany of Sinai and the covenant established thereon. But notice the revelation God makes of himself. We read that, and I quote, And the Lord passed in front of Moses, proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, 
a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands, and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation. Exodus chapter 34, verse 6 to 7. God is merciful and holy. He is stupendously kind, but he does not allow sin. This is a wondrous and remarkable revelation and must be viewed as a great key to the Judeo-Christian revelation. This is the context for the great event of the Incarnation. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. John chapter 3 verse 16. As St. Paul puts it, puts it, God who is rich in mercy out of his great love with which he loved us even when we were dead through our trespasses made us alive with Christ. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 to 5. The point is plain. God is a God of blessings for needy man. He is a God of love, mercy and compassion but utterly holy nevertheless and will not abide sin. It was precisely because of his all-holy love that he sent his Son as the Lamb of God to take away the sin of the world. John chapter 1 verse 29. But what difference is this to make to the way we live, and in particular to the way we deal with our fellow man? It ought to be as obvious as the day, but all too often it is not obvious to our darkened and sinful minds. We must, it is an imperative for our relationship with the God who has revealed himself to us. We must strive to be like him in his mercy and compassion. Our minds and hearts may be, must be made like unto the mind and heart of God. And this is possible through the example and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. As St. Paul writes, Let this mind be in you that which was in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 to 6. Christ is the way, the truth and the life of God. All of this brings us to our gospel that I read earlier, in which our Lord commands that we strive to be like God our loving and merciful Father. Be merciful, he says, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Luke chapter 6, verse 36 to 38. The goal of life, and it is the work of a lifetime, is to attain a heart like unto that of God. Let us learn from Christ and abide in his grace. By his example, and with the aid of his grace, we can do it. By the power of the all-merciful and compassionate God.